I really do get it from Canelo. He's achieved a lot. I think at this point, I really am just starting to appreciate the GOAT, Canelo Alvarez, at the moment. I don't know if he'll go down as one of the best forever, but he's one of the best right now in this time, in this era, in this century. Canelo's going to be one of the best, no doubt. And he's going to keep doing what he needs to do to keep racking up these wins and, and making himself look good and build this crazy legacy and build this crazy resume. I think his focus is on that. And I think if the fight with Benavides happens, he needs a big payday. And I understand because he's going to risk a lot. He has to fight the bigger man and he has to fight a guy that is dangerous on top of that. And Canelo's in a point in his career where he doesn't need the money. He doesn't need to fight Benavides to add more weight to his resume because Benavides' name will not add a lot of weight in Canelo's resume. People would just remember, oh, well, Benavides was just a hype at the moment and then we just wanted that fight. If you want Canelo to risk his legacy, risk taking a loss in his uh, resume, he needs a bag and more power to Canelo for asking for it. Hey guys, welcome to the False Nine Podcast here with episode 207. I didn't do an episode last week. I kind of wanted to take the week off a little bit. Um, and we had, I know we had Canelo and UFC at the same time, but UFC was nothing for me to get excited about. I know the main event was a bit controversial, but I still didn't even watch it. I haven't got to watch it. So not going to talk much about that. Just talk about boxing. And this is probably how the whole month is going to look. It's going to be a lot of boxing content. And towards the end, obviously, we have UFC the beginning of June. So, uh, the, yeah, the next two, three weeks is going to be a lot of boxing, guys. So just be prepared for that. Or if you want to go ahead and come back for the UFC content. But, you know, stick around. Stick around. If not, look at the Fast Night channel clips channel that one's going to have a lot of just everything right everything that we're fighting all right so we had canelo alvarez versus jaime muigia canelo defeats him in a unanimous decision um 12 rounds very entertaining fight in my opinion and uh the fight went exactly how we thought it was going to go you know um nothing nothing crazy nothing in that fight that we didn't think that was going to happen i think for muigia to be i mean i think muigia Ate a lot of shots and kept going forward. And I, I didn't expect it to be like him to have a chin that good. And then just to have that heart to keep looking uh, for the fight with Canelo. So kudos to uh, Munguia for that. But let's let's start real quick with the quick, uh, you know, how I felt about the fight. I think I was very vocal about how I felt it. It's not a fight that I wanted to see. It's not a fight that I asked to see. Um, so it, it's not a fight that I wanted, you could say. And... Um, we all, as as Canelo fans, we all want the Muigia fight. I mean, the Muigia fight. We all want the Benavides fight, and we kind of expected Canelo to, you know, call out Benavides. And there was a little bit about that after the fight, but reality is, we wanted something else, and we got something we didn't ask for, right? So that that's just kind of how the fight was. And for me, I was just kind of vibing, kind of chilling. I was like, all right, let's see how Canelo does. I want to see his approach on this fight. I wonder if he's going to be a lot more patient or he's going to be aggressive. Like, how is he going to approach the fight? And he approached it just like a veteran. You know, that's how he did it. And he just completely dominated Munguia. Um, The fight itself, though, I felt like very... Like, there was like a celebration um, or of an acknowledgement that the king of boxing is fighting, the face of boxing is fighting, which is Canelo. I felt a lot of those vibes like, oh, it's Canelo. Let's give him respect. Like, it's Canelo. Like, it's the face of boxing. Like, it's Canelo, the best guy right now. Like, it felt like it was all about him. And, you know, I'm not complaining about that. But that's just how it felt. It's something interesting that and that I noticed. And it's the first time I think I've noticed that with Canelo. I know when Canelo fights, it's a pretty big deal. But this fight, it just looks like he had all, like, the fans behind him, all the stars behind him. I know him and uh, De La Hoya got into it. But De La Hoya even acknowledged that he's the face of boxing and one of the best in, in the in the boxing ring. So just a lot of respect for Canelo coming up to this fight. And uh, that's how the narrative has, has been. And then we got to the fight and to talk about the fight. Um, before the fight happens, Canelo rewraps his hands. I thought that was interesting. I was like, damn, I wonder what happened. I wonder if he, like... You know, what, like if he was uncomfortable or if people were complaining about something, but it came out and he just said that he was a bit uncomfortable and he wanted to rewrap his hands. But I've never I've never seen a live fight that I've heard that happen. And to hear from Canelo, I did get nervous. I was like, oh, damn, like he's already feeling uncomfortable. Like he's not feeling uh, like himself today. I don't know. I did get scared. I'm not going to lie. As a Canelo fan, I, I was a little worried. Um, But about the fight. So there was two narratives in this fight. 
that I I think there was two narratives. Like the fight itself, like people might say, "Oh, Canelo dominated," but for me, I said, "Dang, I think Canelo is starting to get old." Like you could see that I think his cardio is. I know he used to fade, but the way he faded in this fight, I was like, his. It seemed like he got weaker. He he, he didn't have. Uh, he seemed a little bit less accurate towards the end. Like he slowed down in every way. I think is how I saw it. Now. People are also saying that he carried Munguia, so I don't know if he was holding back, and maybe there was more there to see from Canelo. I don't know, right? But I want to speak about my perspective first. So when I was watching the fight, I thought he was doing good, and there was times where I think he hurt Munguia, and he didn't capitalize on that, and I was a bit confused towards the end. Same thing. He put some nice combinations, and I was like, why aren't you trying to finish this guy? Um, and then when he was getting caught, you know, rounds 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, when he did get caught, I was like, damn, like Canelo doesn't like, I don't know if he's not getting hurt by the punches or he's just like, it, they don't like, it's whatever. Or he just slowed down. Like his defense was not all the way there because his defense early on in the fight was well, but it started to, like I said, started to, to slow down and his, de his, his defense wasn't as, as sharp as it was early on. So for me, the, how I was seeing the fight, I was like, damn, I think Canelo's like slowing down. I think Canelo like is not at the top of his game anymore that's how i saw the fight and then you have the other narrative that he carried mungia into the fight that he didn't want to punish mungia because you know he's mexican 43 and 0 like he didn't want to just do mungia like that um and he didn't want to knock him out he he knew he hurt him but he didn't want to finish him there was times where canelo would initiate the clinch when there was no need for him to do that um, because he would hurt Munguia, put in a nice combination for Munguia, and then he, you can literally see Canelo kind of just grab him, like, come here, dude, like, I, I got you, um, and that's where I'm like, okay, maybe he was holding back, and, and kind of carrying Munguia, and making it, like, selling the fight, making it good, like, Canelo was probably like, oh, I'm gonna let him hit me, just to make it a good fight, um, so, I don't really know which, which narrative to go with, or which narrative, um, it was right was was he carrying Munguia or did Canelo get tired a bit like because I think Munguia did good he did a lot better than I thought he would do and um for him to be able to land some punches on Canelo I was like kind of like damn like is Munguia that good or is Canelo slowing down or is Canelo letting you put these combinations for the fight to be entertaining I don't know right I, I still don't know how this fight really went like because I wanted to see Canelo just completely run through this guy. And he did, but he didn't, right? He, because I don't know, man. I feel like there was still more there. And I don't know if he didn't go all the way in in Munguia because he didn't want to. Or because he, he was just tired and couldn't do it. Um, and I'm curious to know what you guys think. You can uh, let me know in the comments, you know, because I want to say Canelo faded. But then people are saying that he carried Munguia. And I can see that, too, in the fight. Because like I said earlier, there was combinations he would put in and I'm like, bro, finish him. And he didn't want to. He didn't want to. He didn't want to. Or he didn't have he didn't have that speed. He doesn't have that type of power no more. I don't know. Right. I don't know. So the fight was very interesting because I, I, I really don't know where Canelo is at. You know, like, can he fight someone like Benavides or like Crawford? Is he still at that level? Or is he just slightly better than Munguia? Like, that's that's what I don't know. Um, and, and, you know, Canelo, to me, is one of the best. No questions. And he's going to go down as one of the best. So I'm not trying to give throw shade at Canelo. But I don't know where he stands, you know. Like, how good is he at the moment? So I don't know, right? But Munguia, I mean, he came out there fighting. He came out there, showed heart. Um, he got hit with some big punches, some big punches, and, and, and just did not go down. Uh, I was I was surprised that he ate a lot of those shots. I didn't think he was going to be able to eat them. Uh, he got hurt in the body really bad. I don't like in the later rounds, um, and you could see it because he was basically covering himself and he had his hand right here, and he didn't go down. He kept fighting and and he did real good. He made adjustments throughout the fight. He kept throwing this left wide hook early on and i was like bro canelo is going to eat you up alive if you keep doing that and he made the adjustment stopped throwing it and then he's um he 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 adjusted to that and started using the left i don't know if you want to call it like over 
hand slash hook type of punch. But it was just very, very wide uh, hook uh, punch that he would throw. And uh, he stopped doing that. And once he made that adjustment, a more like direct approach, I guess you could say, towards Canelo. And, and he made the adjustments needed to stay in the fight. He took a lot of punishment, but he made the fight entertaining himself too. give credit to him whether Canelo helped him out a little bit or not, but he came forward. It was a real Mexican style type of fight. Um, and he didn't hold back. He didn't just show up for a paycheck. You know, most guys show up and, and they don't want to throw. They just run and have their hands up and just defend for their lives. And they don't want to get knocked out by Canelo and they get a huge payday. Uh, we've seen those fights happen with Canelo all the time, right? As well. But Munguia took it the other direction and wanted to make it fun, wanted to make it entertaining, wanted to beat Canelo. He went there to beat Canelo. He thought he could do it. And he, you know, it, it wasn't his night, but it, if he had the same performance and Canelo had like a real rough night, he could have possibly, you know, came out with the with the lead. It would have been very hard, but he put in that type of effort and work. He wanted to win that fight. So kudos to Jaime Munguia. Um the fight was good. I mean, Canelo's combinations are fucking insane. How he lands combinations and how he landed that uppercut that dropped Munguia. That shit was crazy. And it was so fast. It was like that. I was like, bro. And, and the, the movement before uh, that, that combination was beautiful from Canelo. So I don't know, man. It, it Canelo's combination and, and when he puts those combinations together... Like, he's trying to take your lights out, and, and you don't see it coming. You just don't see it coming. Like, Munguia's head was just right there for Canelo. Canelo set that shit up perfectly and 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 dropped him. And I'm surprised Munguia got up, bro, because that was a heavy punch. And it was a clean punch as well, too. So, I mean, tough, 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 tough guy, Jaime Munguia. Um, so, now... Like what's what's next for these guys? From Mungia, I mean he 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 was very upset about the fight and his performance. Like I said, he came out there to win and he probably put in a lot of effort to that camp and he was probably real healthy as well. But I mean, when you face someone like Canel, like it's there gotta there has to be a lot of factors, you know, for you to beat him, besides the fact that you're just good. You know, I feel like Canel has to be a little bit off. Maybe he gets tired, maybe there's like, you know, there, I feel like there has to be a lot of factors for you just to beat Canelo. Like that, that's a hard fight to win. The judges are against you. Like everything's against you, bro. Like when you fight Canelo. So it, it's a difficult fight. So Munguia needs to, you know, be proud of what he did. And, and he looked a lot better than the last few guys that had fought Canelo. So he made it good. I think, you know, he's behind or he's with Golden Boy Promotions. Um, and they can make some really good fight ha fights happen. I just hope he fights for a world title, man. Munguia, I think he's a good boxer. And he needs to fight for a world title. And uh, whoever that is. Um, but the first person I thought about when, when the fight was over, I was like, Jaime Munguia needs to fight Caleb Plant. Like that matchup, uh, stylistically, I think I would like it. Those guys come forward and they're bringing pressure. They're bringing volume. And both of those guys do that. And I, that's a fight that I want to see. Um, but... Mungia, I think as long as they, they do the right things, take the right fights, he can make a lot of money and uh, he can get some attention. He can win some world titles. And and who knows, right? Who knows what kind of career he'll, the rest of his career will be. But I think he will he can sell pay-per-views. If he, how do I say this? If he just does it right after the Canelo fight, like if he just does it right, he can sell pay-per-views. Because Canelo gives you stardom for a little bit. But people will like quickly will forget about you. So he needs to just make the right decisions, take the right fights. Like I said, against Caleb Plant, I think that would fight would be good. It will sell you pay-per-views. The lead-up would be awesome. Make that fight happen, bro. Make that fight happen. And for Canelo, we all want to see Benavides. I'm going to keep saying that. We all want to see Benavides. We all really do. I mean, towards the end of it, you know, I don't know. I guess Canelo was in his corner um, and, and he was just kind of chilling, waiting for who knows what. And he tells Benavides something like, come here or I'm here. And Benavides is all like this. So it was a cool exchange, in my opinion. Uh, nothing too crazy, just something, something slight. And I think Canelo just acknowledges Benavides. I think it was cool that he was like, hey, bro, what's up? Like, I know you want the smoke. I don't want the smoke with you. The money got to be right. You're a tough guy. I know you're a tough guy. You're a big guy. Um, but the money got to be right. That's, that's how I interpreted that exchange. You know, I think Canelo acknowledges Benavides and, and Benavides wasn't being disrespectful. He was like, I'm here, bro. I'm waiting. You know, he wasn't talking shit to him. It, you know, he was respecting Canelo. Canelo just won. He was giving him mad respect. Um, so 
it was a respectful exchange, but it was like, hey, bro, like, we got to make this shit happen. Like, the people want it. Let's figure it out. If it happens later now, but let's find a way to make it happen. I think they both want to make it happen, but they both know how big that fight is and how much money it could make. So it makes sense. It makes sense that it's not an easy fight to make because there's a lot of money involved and a lot of people are greedy, including the fighters. And a lot of people just want what they want to, they want to capitalize on that and they want to uh, make as much money as possible. Like the promoter, the whoever's going to broadcast the fight, like there, there's just too many hands involved in boxing. And, and when there's a lot of hands and money involved, like it just gets even more complicated. Right. So, um, I hear rumors about this guy named Edgar Berlang or Berlang, something like that. He's a Puerto Rican fighter. Um, I heard rumors prior to the, the Munguia fight that this fight was going to happen. So once you, once I, with Canelo, you know, in the past, once you hear rumors about a guy before the fight, it's because they're already, you know, working it and, and working that deal and negotiating the deal, trying to make that deal happen. So, I feel like that's the fight we're going to get in September. But as far as today, it's rumored that he's going to fight Terrence Crawford. <clears throat> so, like I said, today, Canelo Alvarez and Terrence Crawford was rumored. You know, uh, Turkey al Sheik or al Shak. He's a guy in South, from Saudi Arabia. Um, he's the one that's been making these big fights. Francis Nugano versus Tyson Fury. Uh, Anthony Joshua. Uh, Francis. Um, what else? What else? There's a few. I think I'm missing one more. But, you know, the that kind of stack card with Terrence Crawford in it and Pitbull Cruz for Raidat season. You know, we have Fury and uh, Usage in a few weeks from now. That's also from the same people, from the same promotion. Um, so that guy's making, he's throwing a lot of money into boxing. He wants to fix boxing is what he says. And, uh, he today as this Monday, the May the six, he wants to make Canelo Alvarez versus Terrence Crawford. And this, I found this out before I was recording this and I was like, fuck, this is going to, I got to add this to the pod now because it's a pretty big deal. And, and I think, and well, I'm not like that. I think I want, I know that I'd rather see Terrence Crawford versus Canelo. That's a fight. No question. Is the biggest fight you can make right now. I said that after Canelo beat Earl Spence, the best, the best, and the biggest fight you can make is Terrence Crawford versus Canelo Alvarez. No questions asked. Terrence Crawford, I think, hasn't got the respect he he deserves because of Canelo and Canelo being on top of the guy. You know, now Terrence Crawford got a little clout. He got a massive win against Earl Spence. Everybody wanted that fight. He just completely dominated Earl Spence. It showed his domination. Or his dominance, and now it's like, well, you got one guy that dominated uh, the visions that Canelo used to dominate. Canelo's doing his own thing, keeps winning. Why not make a mega fight with Terrence Crawford and Canelo? And Canelo, people are going to say, well, Canelo's too big. Canelo's not big, bro. He's, like I said, I don't know if it's the age thing or what, but Canelo looks small in this fight for 167 or 168. He came in at 166, which is surprising to me that you come in two pounds lighter um so i mean i think if you can make this fight like at 160 158 something around there i think it's more than possible for this fight to happen and yeah canelo will be slightly bigger than crawford but it won't be that much earl spence was probably is probably bigger than than canelo if i'm being honest so the the weight thing or that discrepancy is not a big deal it, it's not a really big deal i think canelo can make the weight if they if they find something good and i don't think crawford would mind moving up slightly because how much he wants this fight and he's being really vocal he wants the canelo fight in the rogan episode that's all he kept talking about was canelo 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 and now that turkey al shock or al sheik is talking about this fight i'm like bro if he's already talking about it and he went public with this statement this fight's going to happen, whether it happens in, in December, January, or maybe it happens for a year from now for Cinco de Mayo as far as next year. But um, I'm happy to hear it, though. I'm happy to hear it because I gave shit to Canelo. And then after Saturday, I was like, oh, well, he don't have to fight Benavidez. But now, guess what? We can give you Canelo Crawford. How about that? And it's like, oh, shit, give me that. Like, I want to see that. I'll, I, like I said, I picked that fight any day, any day. That's the biggest fight you can make in boxing right now. Not Ryan Garcia and Tank, not Ryan Garcia and Ho and so, not uh, Javante Davis and so and so. It would be Terrence Crawford and Canelo Alvarez. Those 
that those two names is the biggest fight you can make right now. And not even Benavidez and, and, and Canelo. And that fight just has a lot of hype. But look at Crawford's resume. Look at Canelo's resume. And they're from the clash. That's the biggest fight in boxing you can make. No questions asked. Um, and I'd rather see it than Benavidez. Like, i just rather see that fight because, like I said, those resumes on the line and one of them can have each other's number would be crazy. Like, for Canelo to have on his resume that he beat Crawford or Crawford to have on his resume that he beat Canelo, that would just be insane. That would be insane. And, and with Benavidez, if Canelo just beats Benavidez... You know, a lot of people will not remember Benavides. As far as right now, as far as right now, no disrespect to Benavides. A lot of people will not remember Benavides. So 10 years from now, when you look at Canelo's resume and you see Benavides, you might not even not remember. If you see Crawford, though, oh, shit, he beat Terrence Crawford? That's crazy. Versus Benavides. Do you get what I'm saying? And and the name Terrence Crawford just weighs a lot more than Benavides. So that's why i just rather see that fight more than anything. That would be a classic Without questions, and stylistically, it would be a fucking insane fight. So, I'd rather see that one. I'd rather see it than, than Benavidez. Like I said, the weight issue, there's no weight issue. Canelo is talking about money. He wants, if if right now, Canelo, from my understanding, if you want to see Canelo in these big mega fights, you got to come through that bag. Canelo already has a shit ton of money. Canelo has already beat a lot of world champions and has fought the best of the best right now. The fight with Benavidez, he's not fighting the best. He's just fighting a guy with a lot of hype. If I'm, if I'm being honest. So for Canelo, it's like, well, if you want me to fight this guy with a lot of hype and, and sell this mega fight, I need a bag, bro, because he's already been that, been there and done that. And I don't think he's going to take very hard fights till unless he gets a heavy bag. And, I mean, if, if the fight happens with Crawford, he's going to get a humongous bag. No question. So, Canelo's not going to turn that shit down. And Canelo has the advantage. He's a face of boxing. He would be the bigger guy, and he has, he'll has he get a lot of money. So, Canelo's not going to turn that fight down. Benavidez is a bigger guy. It's just hype. So, what if Benavidez beats Canelo and then Benavidez... I mean, what if Canelo beats Benavidez and Benavidez don't even be winning like that no more? You know? And it wasn't really worth it for Canelo. So I can see that. All, I can see it. Like, I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. So um, if the money's the money will be right for Canelo, everything, everything, he has all the advantages. And um, I think he could kind of find a way out from the Benavides fight by taking the Crawford fight. Because if he takes a Crawford fight, he doesn't have to fight Benavides anymore. Like, there's just no, I don't care. Canelo can do what the fuck he wants after Crawford. I don't really, I, I, that's really how I feel. So, um, yeah. But um, I also want to say, you know, this last part of the episode, why we will not see Canelo versus Benavides. Uh, and I feel like I've said this a little bit before uh, about, you know, where Canelo's at in his career. So Canelo, I believe, is 32, 33 years old of age. He was fighting since he was, what, professionally, I think since he was 16, and um, he ha- he he's already beat everybody that he needed to beat. And now there's no one else left because he's beat them or they all got old. So there's no reason for him to fight them. And and there's just new names coming up. There's just hype. There's just hype names right now. There's there's only a few boxers right now that are established and they're still on top of the game. You know, Terrence Crawford being one of them and Canelo. So. You have a guy with a lot of hype right now. Canelo's at the point in his career where he already did the hard part. Um, he, he has all the money. So there's no real motivation for, for him to fight Benavides. Benavides is a bigger guy. Benavides is fighting at light heavyweight his next fight. So he's going to fight a bigger guy, no questions, no questions. So there's just a lot of risk there for Canelo. And Canelo, like I said, he came into this fight light, small, 166 at weigh-in. I'm sure at weight at weight, uh, fight night he was hot, hot, light uh, heavier. I mean, but he he's not a big guy, you know. He's not a big guy for 168. And um, also, like when when Canelo was coming up as a challenger, oh, he like with same thing with Charles Oliveira. I liked I would use Charles Oliveira here when Charles Oliveira was a challenger. 
oh, he's a, he, he won the title. Okay, he has to fight Dustin Poirier next. He's going to lose. He's not, he's not going to win him. He's not going to beat him. Justin Gage, he's not going to beat him. He's not going to win. He's not going to beat him. And then he ends up doing it. Canelo, same thing. Canelo gets a beautiful knockout or he gets a massive victory uh, win. It's like, oh, okay. Okay, he won. But he can't beat this guy. He goes fights that guy. He beats him. He go, he go fights this guy. And he goes beats him. And then, oh, well, he can't beat this guy. Oh, we can't beat him. He fights Mayweather. He loses. Oh, well, he lost. He can't beat Mayweather. But then he keeps fighting more guys and more guys and more guys. And he keeps winning and winning and winning and knocking them out, knocking them out. Next, you know, Canelo's fighting fucking Jaime Muigia and he's 32 years old. And I think we kind of forgot what Canelo's run era was. And I want to say it ended after he defeated Billy Joe Smith. I think that was the last hardest fight that he had. Um, you know, and he made a crazy run to get those titles when he beat Caleb Smith, Billy Joe Sanders. Um, I forgot the other guy, Avini. And there was one more name. I forgot how it is. But he went on the crazy run like in 2020, 2019. And then he had a he had to get surgery in his hand. Very understandable. He fought Triple G again for the third time. Like Canelo has done everything he could and has won everything he could in the sport. And now that he's on top of the game, I think that we kind of forgot what Canelo has done in the sport of boxing. Because you go look at his resume. I see pictures, bro. It's a list like this long of all the people that he's fought. Like notable, not just everybody. Notable wins out of the 65 fights that he has. It's like a, to a list of 20 names of notable opponents. And then on the other side, you got all the titles that he won, which is just insane. I'm like, what the fuck? This guy is crazy. You know, and he's about to surpass, I think he's three world fighters away from surpassing Mayweather that he's beaten. Because I think Mayweather has beaten, I think it's 23, and he has uh, beaten 20 world champions. If I'm not mistaken, if I look at that picture correctly. But that's crazy. So let's not forget what Canelo has achieved in the sport of boxing. And right now we're demanding this Benavides fight, including myself. Like Before I demand and demand, Canelo has delivered and delivered for the last 10 years, bro. And he has. Canelo has delivered. You know, And we went through phases with Canelo. Oh, this guy's hype. Oh, this guy thinks he's the shit. I, I knew Mexicans that didn't like Canelo. Because, oh, Canelo, he thinks he's the shit the way he talks. He thinks he's so cocky. He thinks he's the best. I know people that thought about Canelo like that. And I know people now that ride Canelo's dick that used to hit on Canelo like crazy. And I used to ride for Canelo on his early days and people, oh, he's not that good. He's not that. He thinks he's the best, but he's not. People call him pound for pound, but he's not. People were mad that Canelo was coming up, bro. And he was getting mad hate. And then it was like, oh, he's not going to fight Triple G. He's not going to fight him. And then when he did fight him, the first one, arguably a robbery, right? But then he does beat him in the second one. Then he beats him in the third one recently. And then he goes on this crazy run. And like I said, next to you know, he's fighting Munguia. And we have to go to Benavides because Benavides is, has the hype. So we resort to someone like Benavides. We're looking for the fight, the next big fight for Canelo. Because it, like I said in the, in the last clip or this last episode, I said that if, if Benavides didn't exist, then Munguia fight would have been huge. It would have had a lot more weight. But, you know, we're just asking for something like... We want Canelo to do the impossible for some reason. Because Benavides, realistically, is not a, a fight that Canelo should take. David Benavides is a light heavyweight. He should be fighting Bivol or Bitterbeef. Because to make 168 for Benavides, that's crazy. That is crazy, bro. Like, that's crazy. And then on fight day, there's no doubt in my mind that he's coming in close to 200 pounds. No doubt. And, and that's not a fight that Canelo should be taking. And the only reason why it's in the conversation as well is because he fought Bivol. That's the only reason why Benavides is also in this conversation. Because, oh, well, he went up to Bivol. He'll probably go up or, or he'll be down to fight me. But Canelo went up and got his ass beat. So now he knows he can't really fight at that weight because it's, it's a different weight class. It's different, bro. Like you, Those guys are huge. So... You know, there's a lot of reasons why that fight's not going to happen. And there's only one reason why that fight will happen. Because we just want it. That's it. But 
realistically, that's not a fight that should happen. You know, we can make all the excuses for Canelo. Uh, that we can make all the excuses why we should have this fight. And there's not really good reasons why this fight should happen against Benavides. Besides that Benavides has been calling for the fight and has been winning. But like, why else should we see this? You know what I mean? So, I get it. I really do get it from Canelo. He's achieved a lot. And I mean, we. I think at this point, I really am just starting to appreciate the GOAT, Canelo Alvarez, at the moment. I don't know if he'll go down as one of the best forever. But he's one of the best right now in this time, in this era, in this century. Canelo's going to be one of the best. No doubts. Um, and he's going to keep doing what he needs to do to keep racking up these wins and, and making himself look good and build this crazy legacy and build this crazy resume. So I think his focus is on that. And I think if he wants, if the fight with Benavides happens, he needs a big payday. And I understand because he's going to risk a lot. He has to fight the bigger man. Like, and he has to fight a guy that is dangerous on top of that. But the fact that he's just a bigger guy and, and Canelo is in point of his career where he doesn't need the money. He doesn't need the money. He just don't. He doesn't need to fight Benavides to to have more, like to add more weight to his resume, because Benavides' name will not add a lot of weight in in Canelo's resume. People would just remember, oh well, Benavides was just a hype at the moment, and then we just wanted that fight. That's that's it, right? So, if you want Canelo to risk his legacy, risk taking a loss in his uh, resume, he needs a bag, and 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 more power to Canelo for asking for it, right? So. That's just that's just how I feel about it. But guys, that's the episode. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. I mean, boxing has been really exciting this month and this uh, this past month and this month coming up. So I hope you guys keep enjoying the content. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, make sure to check out the False Nine Clips channel because we post there daily, and uh, we'll talk about the fight on Saturday on that channel. So see you guys on the next one. Peace.